I've been out doing some landscape and macro photography today and I've got this scene set up down here. We've got the autumn leaves up on the top. We've got a pool of water. We've got this mushroom with all the sort of striations on the side. And we've got this mossy area. And I've got this set up and I've been at F8 and F11 for the time that I've been here. But I've been wondering what the best aperture would be for me. So I thought it might be something that you're interested in as well. So what I've done is I've gone from F2.8 to F32. I've just gone up in full stops. What I tend to aim for is getting everything in focus front to back. I often find it's a bit distracting if say the subject is in focus and areas around it are sort of blurred out because my eyes tend to go to the blurred bits. But that all comes down to personal preference. So we'll pull them up on the big screen later and see what looks better. It's been a few days since I was out in the woods and I've got the pictures up onto the laptop but I've been thinking about questions that you might ask so I'm going to go through those now. I used the 5D Mark III for the photos. It's a full frame sensor and I used the Canon 100mm f2.8 macro lens. To take the photos I used a two second timer and I kept the focus point the same for all the pictures and I focused on the on the leaves on top of the mushroom. To try and keep the exposure the same across the board, I just dialed it in where the camera said the exposure was right. So I just kept it on, on that line in the middle and then just adjusted the shutter speed and the aperture and just left the ISO where it was. There will be some lighting changes, but um, it'll be as close as you can get it really. The macro lens brings things closer but it also seems to exaggerate the problems. Maybe that's a negative way of thinking about it. It makes it easier to get a shallow depth of field, which you might actually like. I don't, but that's why we're doing this. We can go through these and work out what you like more and what I like more. And yeah, we'll, we'll get on with it. The first one we got here is uh, F2.8. Also, I'm going to leave this information up here in the top left hand side and I haven't edited these. These are all raw files. You can see I haven't touched anything here on the right hand side. With this f2.8 one, if we zoom in on the back here, you can see that the background is all out of focus. And then as we come down, the back of the mushroom is out of focus. So is the back leaf. And then you can see it start to come back into focus on the left hand side of the mushroom. And the front side of that front leaf is in focus as well. Then the depth of field goes out on the um, on that front bit of the mushroom there. Then it comes back into focus at the bottom of the mushroom. Then the stalk of the mushroom goes back out of focus then it looks like the moss is out of focus below the mushroom then there's a little area where it's in focus again and then it goes out of focus so it seems to go in and out of focus a lot which personally I don't like that I find that really distracting and my eye is drawn to that little area of out of focus moss at the bottom and on that front lip of the mushroom where it's sort of in between them focus areas and yeah I think that's a bit too distracting. I guess you could say it's more of a fairy tale kind of shot. I think the reason I don't like this kind of thing is if you're going to go through all the effort to find a nice location I don't know why I'd want to get it all blurry like this. It's the same as when you see them, is it intentional camera movement shots where it's like you just drop the tripod. I don't understand why you go through the effort of finding a nice place like this and then just turn it into a blur. But it all comes down to personal preference. You can do what you want, but I don't want to see it. Then the next one is F4. Oh, that makes a big difference. The F2.8 one has got a massive vignette around the edge. 
You could probably fix that with lens correction. Yeah, that brings it closer. So the FT.8 also has a big vignette around the edge, but we'll leave that off for now. So with the F4 version, we'll zoom in at the back again. So that back piece is all out of focus. And then same with the back of the mushroom. It looks like we've got more of the mushroom in focus now though, like more of the basin and more of that front leaf and more of the front of the mushroom. Like that bit on the right hand side, it's just out of focus, but it's not far off now. And then underneath, the stalk is still out of focus. Then we've got this area of in focus moss at the front, then a little bit of out of focus. That's a step closer to what I like, but I still think there's a bit too much in and out of focus. I'm going to be saying focus a lot in this video. I must have said it 20 times already. I still find this area on the front of the mushroom distracting. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe you like that kind of thing. I just find it distracting though. It's definitely making the lines more sharper compared to the FT.8 though. Then we'll go to the 5.6 and it's still blurry in the background. People also call this bokeh, bokeh. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it's yeah, out of focus. And with the mushroom, we're getting even more in focus now. This is getting closer to what I like and you can see more of the details on the leaf. And it's almost in focus two thirds of the way on the mushroom now. That lip on the left hand side is better. And we're getting more of these, um, I think they're called striations on the front of the mushroom where, where all them creases are. There's a little bug on the right hand side as well, a little green fly. And then the stalk is still out of focus. Got that. Yeah. That front bit is the same on all the pictures, really. So that goes out, in, out. Yeah. It's closer, but it's not quite where I like it. And now we're on to the F8 one. Zoom in on the back. The lines are definitely getting sharper now. You can see a little bit more about what's going on in there. It just makes it a bit more contrasty. And then on the mushroom, we're starting to see some details on that back leaf. Not all of them, but it's getting closer. And then that left hand side of the mushroom is coming back into focus too. And we're almost getting all the details on the front here. I reckon one more stop or two more stops and we'll get all this detail back. But you can still see that bug on the right hand side. And I like how you can see all the details on this leaf. These are all things that you notice in pictures, but you don't notice when you're there in real life. I didn't notice all the details on the leaf when I was there, but when it's frozen like this, you can, you can like go into more detail and pick out things from the scene. I think that's why I like everything in focus. I, yeah, I just like seeing all the details. And then as we look at the moss at the bottom, we're starting to get the stalk back into focus. Then this area is in. Then that front bit is just out of focus. I would almost be happy with that one. And then we'll go to F11. 
you can see the the jump up in contrast on the front of the mushroom there but we'll go to the back again it's still blurry but you can see more of the the lines where the grass and the sticks are a lot more of this mushroom is now in focus and we're starting to get the back of the mushroom in focus too getting all these details on the leaf here we've got the insect and we're getting the details on the right hand side on the front of the mushroom here and you can see all them creases and all the lines in there it's still a little bit soft on the front left and as you come down still a little bit soft underneath it but it's getting there then this area in the front is almost all in focus now then we'll go to f16 start at the back and you can see even more of the grass it's basically just all coming into focus now and the top basin of the mushroom is looking better it's still a bit soft at the back but that front leaf is all in focus the back leaf is a it's a little bit overexposed which isn't helping but it was a yellow leaf and the front of the mushroom is a lot better now it's still slightly soft here on the left and the right hand side is really sharp now you can see all the details there that little insect's moved now though and then the stalk is coming back into focus and that's a little bit soft at the front there but we're nitpicking now it's probably not somewhere that you're going to be paying attention to that area i'm hoping that on this next one all of the mushroom will be sharp but we'll check that now so the next one is f22 and you can see all the details in the back there already you can see the all the moss on the back here you can see more of these sticks but they're still not sharp but it sort of sets the scene better i think rather than just being a green blur that's pretty much sharp all the way to the back now there's a little bit of glare on it at the back here but i think if you edited that you could bring that back see the front of the mushroom here is now looking good you can see all the details the right hand side here is really in focus now that looks totally different to be far it looks i think that's my favorite f22 that's interesting because I would never go to F22. And then underneath, that stalk is in focus now. And so is the moss. I wasn't expecting that. I don't go to F22 pretty much ever other than for this example. I usually stop around F16. So maybe I need to experiment more. But we'll go to the last one now and go to 32. And we'll start at the back again. And you can basically pick out all the details at the back there. They're not sharp, but you can tell what it is. You can tell there's grass, moss. There's some other plants on the left hand side. And all of the mushroom is now in focus and you can pick out the details on the leaves you can pick out all the details on the mushroom now as well like right down to the stalk everything is now in focus and all the mossy area is in focus those front ones are slightly out but that's possibly because of the five second shutter speed there might be in a little bit of wind but that's quite interesting to look through 
I'm surprised that I like the F22 one the most. You can see the subtle differences in light changes as you flick through them. So now we've gone through them and I'm actually surprised with the results a little bit. I wasn't expecting F22 to be my favourite, but it's quite interesting to just look through them and see all the differences. In between 16 and 32 was my favourite. Didn't really notice any diffraction at F32, which is what everyone always goes on about. I think that just goes to show that you, you probably shouldn't read too much and just go out and do it. The forums about photography are kind of horrible a lot of the time and they're just, I don't know. I don't think they're the best places to learn. It might be a good idea to go and do this with your camera and lenses and work out what you like the most because once it's there in front of you you either like it or you don't but i'm going to put these onto a blog post so you can look at them for as long as you want i'll link that down below i've already done a few video guides on the channel so i'll link some of those below but if you want to see more please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell and let me know what you think down in the comments if you've got any questions leave those down below as well and I'll see you next time.